Lovely. Well, that we move on now to uh, another technology. We've got uh, Stephen Hawes from Opulo, if you'd like to come and join me on the stage. Thank you very much. Now, one of the areas of innovation comes often from frustrations we have personally, and this gentleman had a personal frustration. <laughs> so I understand it, and I'd like him to explain a little bit more about it. So all the best. Thank you very much. My name is Stephen Hawes, I'm the founder of Opulo, and we make machines for mid-scale manufacturing. In 2019, I did a Kickstarter for a little gizmo that I called the Glow Tie, which was a light-up bow tie that you can control with your phone. And I had a very modest goal of only 100 units, and I thought it wouldn't be too hard to just make these by myself in my apartment, and I was very wrong. It was nights and weekends for months trying to get these things put together, but by far the most difficult part of it was assembling all the boards. I only had to make 100 of them, but I had to hand populate over 3,000 components by hand. It was horrible, and I started looking for another option. I found that there were two other ways that I could really consider going about doing it. The first is going to a contract manufacturer. Well, they will take your design, and they set it up on very expensive $100,000 pick-and-place machines and make it for you. But what's expensive about it is the upfront setup cost. And when you're only making 100 glow ties, it's exorbitantly expensive, and it's not really worth it. It actually doubled my bill of materials cost. So it really wasn't a reasonable option for me. And often, depending on where they are, there can be a language barrier or time zone difference that makes it hard to make sure your thing is being made the way that you want it to be. The other option is to actually buy one of these things yourself. These can be tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars and often require an industrial setting to run properly. And I was living in an apartment outside of Boston, so this also wasn't really an option. I found that there were really three main scales of making things. You start off with prototyping, so a soldering iron and hot air gun many of us are used to, and this is how I made my glow ties. Very accessible tools for this. Then you go to mass production, and this kind of thing is what the contract manufacturers have. $100,000 pick and place machines, very, very expensive. That's how you're making an iPhone. But in between, there's really not a lot of great ways to make your thing for electronics. And that's why I went and made the Lumen PNP, which is a desktop pick and place machine that's meant to fill that gap. So it automates your production for circuit boards, but it also doesn't cost the same as a $100,000 pick and place machine. Uh, over the past few years, I've been documenting the progress of working on this project on YouTube. Uh, we've had about 2.5 million impressions, 42,000 followers of the project on YouTube, and about uh, a little over 3,000 community members. And this has been great for us because this has been exactly our early adopter market. And that's part of the reason why we're so excited to be here uh, with Elector's uh, potential offer here, is that that will let us grow outside of our initial target market of the early adopters into a wider market. And we started to see a little bit of that, but we're trying to grow and, and share that with more people, a wider audience. We've also had a pretty good amount of media coverage so far, a little bit because of the project, uh, Elector included, <laughs> um, which has been fantastic for sharing what we're doing and getting it out there when we have a new uh, update or a product design. It's also entirely open source. Everything about the machine is totally available. You can download it and make your own. In fact, many people do. We have over 100 folks that have actually built their own machine. And this has been fantastic because before we shipped a single one, a ton of people were giving us feedback about things to change and update. And we regularly have people actually adding, uh, making contributions to the design online, uh, giving us feedback from their own experience using it. And it's been absolutely incredible. So why now? Why not do this five years ago? Why not wait five years to do it? There are two things that we've seen of why now is the best time to do this. The first is suddenly it is very easy for anyone to make a circuit board. This is a, a trend of increased interest in ordering turnkey PCBs from two very popular uh, PCB manufacturers. You can get a few boards for just a few bucks. This uh, was not at all the case before, but now they realize that they're already making a large panel and they have little gaps in their panel. If they have a a web portal to accept a $5 PCB, they can make a lot more money on that panel, all the PCB board shops. So now everyone can make a board, but you can make one. It's hard to make a lot. And it's clear that people are trying. They see that they can make these boards, but it's difficult to make a lot of them. So you see uh, websites like uh, Tindy and um, Electrons and places like this where people are selling hundreds of thousands of units, but they're hand placing all of these parts. The other thing is a really recently mature software and hardware ecosystem from FDM 3D printers. So over the past decade, very standardized things like a stepper motor driver, certain aluminum extrusion profiles, and software packages like Marlin, which is 3D printer firmware, we've actually modified Marlin to run the pick and place. We've added new features into it. So it's because of these existing things that we're able to offer this thing for such a reasonable price. It's a 1745 USD, um, a lot less than the $50,000 machines. Uh, uh, Open PNP is another piece of desktop software which is used for controlling pick and place machines. All of this enables us to do this right now. So where are we at so far? 
early this year, we moved into an office in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to start actually trying to get these things out into the world. And starting in February, we started shipping hundreds of kits. So these are things people are actually putting these together, very much early adopters trying to get on board with actually building the machine themselves effectively. Um, and now we have people using them for useful work, making boards for their business and for their contract work out in the world. It's been really, really cool to see. Um, and in July of this past year, we announced the V3 of the machine, which comes almost entirely assembled. You're actually placing your first board within about an hour of opening up the box, a lot uh, looking to kind of get outside of that early adopter market into more of the, you know, the early wave of people that just want to use it as a tool and not as much of a project. We've recently ramped up our production at our office. We've expanded the team to six people now. Um, and we're making, this is our print farm in the office where we print a lot of the parts that go into it and assemble all of the sub-assemblies. Um, we actually make all of the machines with themselves. So they actually assemble their own circuit boards. This is our SMT farm in our office. They build their own controllers. And this is fantastic because we actually get to use our own product every day, which means we know what's great about it and we know what's most important to work on to improve it. So where are we going in the future? We have feeders coming up early next year, and these automatically move components forward to make it very automated. The whole process, very little hands-on interaction. You set it up, you let it go, and your boards are made. And we're, in the next five years, we're looking to have an SMT line completely available for mid-scale manufacturing. Thank you very much. Thank you there, Stephen. You can keep the microphone for a second. Wonderful. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. <laughs> okay. well, uh, I think we can feel the pain. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, I love the photograph of the, the boxes. It almost looked like they were walking out of your offices on their own and oh, ready yeah. to march out. It felt like it, yeah. <laughs> so we've got Justin here again helping us. We've got a question here in the front row for Stephen. Can you hear me? Good. All right. Um, so there's a nice audience here, international. If you, had, if you can communicate what your biggest challenge today is that you need help with, what would that be? It's, it's really getting it out to people. Like I said, we had the YouTube channel, which has been fantastic for getting it out to those early adopter markets. But if you're having a hard time making your board, you're not going on YouTube for some you know, person making a pick and place machine. So it's really sharing it with that, that next, uh, next tier of people that can find it useful that isn't the early adopters. That's the, the number one thing we're focusing on. We can make them, we've been making them, it's been going great. We just need to let people know about it, share, the fact, share it with them. Any more questions from our audience? We've got one here from Eric. Yeah, congrats on uh, your uh, product. It's, Thank uh, you. You've really taken uh, self-made to the next level, right? <laughs> I mean, even the machines make themselves. <laughs> yeah. So um, my question is, uh, we talked about it briefly when we chatted uh, the other day, but um, at what point do you decide to, to involve a production partner so that you guys can do the development and a uh, production partner would actually do the sales to finance that. The right? actual making of the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I had that slide earlier where I kind of talk about the, the different tiers. So when we start to get to the point where it really starts to make more economical sense to go, we're making enough of them that it doesn't make sense to use these kind of techniques. Mid-scale is meant to be the stepping stone to mass production. So once we grow past that point, that's where it starts to make sense to, to ship it out. You know, like we use it because it makes sense, you know, um, but once it doesn't anymore, then we'll, we'll look into, you know, sh sharing it other, uh, other places and having a, a contract manufacturer partner. So it's about the growth. How, how many are we making? So we've got another question here from CJ. Quick question following. So, you know, zero to 60, how long does it take on average to put, you know, to get one together? You get an order, and to put one together? <laughs> That's a very difficult question to answer. Uh, it usually, we do batches, so it's not like, you know, we go through the whole thing. Um, oh man, I mean, it, it probably takes, I don't know, well, like eight days from like the first part of a board being made to, it's going, is that fair? Okay, like six hours of touch time, eight days full stop. Um, uh, and that also includes, most of that is quality checks. So we've made a bunch of jigs that we like plug everything in and make sure it all moves correctly and we log it to a database and we make sure that we can track everything and like the fact that everything has worked out of the box before we, we ship it out. Um, yeah, it's, it's not a small task. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you very much to Stefan from Oculo there talking about the Lumen PMP. We wish you all the best with the competition.